Navigation is an art and a science. It's an art because you basically have a chart, which is your canvas. You have the land, the territory, you have the stars, you have the sea, you have the tides, the currents, you have weather, all that combined. It's a science because there's a lot of math involved. You have distances, equations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, all that stuff. Before they had the printing press, charts were really pieces of artwork. If you look at old charts, they're pretty amazing. You'll see some charts have like dragons on them or sea monsters or krakens. Those old charts, they drew a monster where people got lost at sea. They didn't know that these ships were being grounded by a reef or running into another shipwreck or something like that. So all they knew was, okay, this ship went down in this area, a hundred men died, a monster must have ate them, right? I mean, it's pretty funny to think about now, but it was a real thing back then. So when I think of navigation being an art and a science, I think of the artwork that those old quartermasters used to produce on the charts. <laughs> talking in front of No, I know, guys. I know. It's, it's nerve wracking. It is nerve wracking. Yeah, no, it is. You got something that kind of harness that yeah. energy as well. How far is our leg? 1.67 knots. How, how fast are we going to, how fast is that leg? How, what's the time on, on that leg? Three minutes. Roger. All right. We're not going to say anything. Go for it. All right. Straight up. I'm going to start over. Roger that. <laughs> All right. So good morning, my name is BM3 Weegers and I'll be giving today's navigation brief. So for the start, we're going to get underway from Desert Cove, Pier 42. Once all boats are underway, we're going to form up in a wedge formation. Once we're in a wedge, we're going to make our way to uh, green, day shape number 7. Once at day shape number 7, we're going to step it out and then we're going to proceed our way to waypoint 1. How long is that first leg? The uh, first leg is uh, 1.67 miles, <coughs> roughly approximately 3 minutes to get from waypoint. Depending on any further questions, this concludes the brief for today's mission. And a navigation brief is an art as well as a sales pitch. First thing you got to do is sell yourself. And the navigation part is probably the best way to do that. To, the part to, he's going to be most familiar the with. More, the part he can identify with. When you get into tactics and special ops and all that shit, he, he, he probably has a glazed over look like, all right, well, all right so you guys been doing it. But navigation, now he can, you're giving him something, you're giving him some meat he can chew on. He can nitpick it, he can look at it, he can know if it sounds right. If we can give a sales pitch to the captain that gives him the warm and fuzzies that we can do our job, then there's a reason for us in the Navy. And we like our lifestyle, that's for sure, so. We could very well be set up. We might as well have bunks inside that motherfucker because we're going to get lifted up and set down inside the fucking loading area. I, I see the red X. What, the what might I, is that what I'm going to find? I, there's a big red X out there on a on yes. something. Lead boat jumps out of the air, knocks the fucking radar arch off, kills two of your guys. Our mission's over at that point, right? That would have been such a simple thing to think of. Somebody's going to probably want to take a look at those charts. That's 19 seconds. I'll show you where that falls out, okay? The way you brief the nav should be uh, with no less confidence than the way you brief the execution phase. Visibility says it's unlimited. Isn't it supposed to rain at some point today? I want you to create a, a visible picture for the captain to see what's going on out there. Let me talk about captains. It doesn't make sense for a captain to have a potential loss of life when you're going after like a pirate or a drug runner, or a trafficker, or just an overall scumbag. The captain wants every soul that left on deployment to return home from deployment. If the skipper thinks that we don't have our stuff together, then we're not gonna get the mission. So, and that's what we train for, and that's what we want. We, we're obviously doing this for one thing. We wanna go stop bad guys. So if we nail a nav brief, we have a better chance of doing what we volunteered to do. Some slow is going to be like, go back to that shit. Where'd you get that bullshit from? Because they love nothing better than to mm -hmm. dress you down. In front Skipper, of look how smart I am. He's fucked up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's how it's going to go. They're going to, somebody's going to run back and check it. 
and say, them guys don't know what they're doing. They, they, don't, they don't even understand what ties and currents, how it really works. So what Senior Chief is just talking about there was sometimes the officers in the wards room during a navigation brief, they're not so much interested in what we're saying and how the mission's gonna go. They're interested in looking smart. It's a rarity. Usually the SWOs are pretty cool because they understand how difficult navigation can be because they're always in the bridge. Sometimes you get that guy or girl who just knows everything about everything. That's all part of the strange dichotomy between the officers and the enlisted. It's a strange game we play. <laughs> so, in a, in a room full of SWOs, you're not going to get away with that kind of bullshit. Be careful with that. <laughs> Small boat world is a whole nother world than, than what these guys are used to on the bridge of ship. Try to explain. These guys are like a den of lions. They chew you up for everything. And you guys can be back in the fucking engine room cleaning shit. Alright? So fucking start on time or have a reason why you're not. If yours is the same or worse, you're gonna get beat up even worse because now we've told you already. Okay, how the fuck are you going to be on both boats? <laughs> well, that's the kind of shit that's going to bite you right in the fucking ass, I can promise you. Don't guess. I'm asking you. I'm the CEO. Back to you. <laughs> Where did you get your current information from? Once you let something like that happen, your credibility goes right down the toilet. You know? The most junior motherfucker in here needs to know what that means. You were stabbing at the chart a lot with your pencil. Come on, geniuses. We've fucking been doing this for two weeks. Huh? Well, it was written horrible and that's yeah. bullshit thing was put on there, so. And I don't know why you talked about this because I specifically sat you down and showed you how to look it up. And if you think this is embarrassing, this ain't shit. Is anybody writing this shit down? <clears throat> All the things take, you know, we're, we're, we're again, we're nitpicking, but we, we, we're never going to let you guys, it's never going to be to get out of the scot free. All right? It's just never, it's never the case. It doesn't matter who you're briefing to, you're not going to get out of the scot free. So. Be, be ready for it. Be ready job, buddy. Buddy. It's the wolf slayer around here. These guys are rough. We get chewed up in there. But just like anything, you can't really listen to the tone. You gotta listen to what they're saying. And we've learned a heck of a lot because we've been hammering that home. Well, I'm gonna continue on with this hike. You guys have a wonderful day. I hope that I gave you some insight on navigation. Learning is fun. Using some more of those cells that you never thought you'd use in your brain, it's fun. Get it. If you're quiet, you can hear the woodpeckers. They're up here banging on these trees. It's a pretty big one. Gotcha.